Welcome to Michael Bruschetta. This is season two, episode two. I'm Chris here with Bodie, Big Dog, Big Dog, Reagan. Hello, Angie. Hi. Oh, I brought your wife this week. Okay. Well, I didn't say who everybody else was either. I'm just saying. I'm not his I'm wife important. either. <laughs> yeah, I, didn't, I mean, I'm just saying. I didn't I say brother-in-law. Kind of I didn't say sister. I thought we were just saying names. We need to discuss that before we start the podcast. But you okay. should already know this. I'm whatever. just saying. You say yeah. it every week. Well, whatever. I want to be your wife too. Well, and, you know what? In future episodes, you I think be, I need to be my wife next week. You can be my wife you next week. You can be my wife You have to hold his hand the whole time, though. I'm just no, saying. No, not holding his hand. We also have a special guest with us, Tanner. Hi. Hey. Hello. Hi. Special guest. I'm yeah. special. A younger, you, you younger generation special. that we're gonna have some questions for. See how they think, which we already know is very differently from the way we think. Yeah, but that'll be uh, it's true. It'll be very interesting to see what she has to say. And Tanner think. is my 16 year old daughter. 17, 17. I'm 17. She's not 17. <laughs> she wants to be 17. Okay, she first is of all, she's, she's almost 18. <laughs> True. No, she's I, not. It hurts my heart. It, it hurts my heart so bad. She will literally never be 18. <laughs> well, 16 down, is not honestly. the age you want her to be. Why not? What age Trust would me. I want her to be? Not 16. Well, which one? You Maybe have to pick 12. Up. 12? Were you five no. feet at 14? No, 12 is no good because she doesn't drive. 16 has to be the age. Oh, you're we need right. her to drive. True. <laughs> I'm I'm the grocery runner. That's right. We have free DoorDash. <laughs> true. That's that is true. that is true. Word. Yep. So that's the age I want. What is your argument for 12? Yeah, I don't think I should bring that argument up on the podcast. So. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Ooh. See, Dang. why you always got to make me so sad? You always got to put me in a dark place and make me so Cry. I want to cry. Make me so cry. Real. She does. She makes me want to cry. All right, all right. So before we begin, I just want to have to have a correction on the podcast. I a little mistake. I mean, well, you know, hey, I want. To. Dude, I feel like I want to faint. So uh, <laughs> when I was discussing Madison Cawthorn talking about orgies in Congress, you know, and everybody got upset, and uh, I said the Democrats got really upset with him, making sure he didn't get really like it. Uh, I always have Democrats on the brain. Apparently, it was the GOP. It was Republicans that were really got upset with them, oh. which is very interesting. Uh, so I just want to point that out. Uh, there are three stages, I feel, for me to make a correction. The first stage is I'll say something wrong, and then none of you correct me. Uh-huh. And uh, the second stage is I realize I've said something wrong, and then I, I'm upset with you for not correcting me. Right. And uh, the third stage is I make the correction, and I'm going to resent you. For not correcting me. Oh, okay. So let's, uh, let's well, work on that. That's, that's looking, our fourth stage. Yeah, I'm looking for the fourth stage where nobody gives a shit. That's the stage I'm that's at right now. That's the stage I'm looking okay, for. Okay, I don't know if you noticed, but when you're on the internet, if you don't correct yourself, uh, the internet can come Canceled. down. Canceled. Really? We yeah. call those people yeah. trolls. Yeah. So. And I don't care. You know, podcast yeah. Karens. Right. <laughs> Canceled. Canceled. Tanner's like, Canceled. <laughs> that's right, Tanner. <laughs> so, just wanted to get that out of the way. It was bothering me. Don't let it happen again. Uh, well, That's right. I Never, guarantee- ever be wrong again. Well, I guarantee it's going to happen again. No. Gonna happen. It yeah. will. It will. I can't believe it. Yep. So, uh, before we start the interview, uh, just a uh, couple of things we want to talk about. Number one, it's a very happy day over here. Alec Baldwin has been indicted. Alec Baldwin uh, goes to jail. Maybe well, not to jail. Well, yeah, maybe not. I don't just know. Just an indictment. Okay, yeah. well, explain this to me because I don't understand. He got off. So why are they now coming back well, and indicting him? I don't know that he got off, apparently, because I know he's being indicted. Yeah, but they so, said they weren't filing any charges. At one point, he got off. In yeah. other words, they said they cleared him of any wrongdoing well, and then dropped the investigation. I don't know. So, they, I, you know what? I didn't dig too closely into it. I was just happy that it's happening. Although, I feel like he might still get off because uh, they said that um, when the FBI was testing out the gun to see if it went off all by itself and all that foolishness that he said, which... I don't know why they had to test that. Obviously, the gun didn't go all by itself. But uh, apparently, the FBI broke the gun somehow, and they had to replace parts inside the gun. So I feel like his defense attorney is going to really have a uh, good chance of getting him off because of that. I have no idea how they broke that gun, what they could have possibly been doing. But what a fuck up. Yeah. Somehow in the testing process, apparently, yeah. they uh, damaged the evidence. Yeah. Which any good attorney is going to try to pick apart. Right. What, what uh, amazes me the most about this, uh, besides the fact that the FBI broke the gun, I just boggled my mind, is that almost everyone I've spoken to about this 
uh, feels like Alec Baldwin should not go to jail. Except for the people in this room. Well, except for the people in this room, yeah. Almost everyone else that I've mentioned this to has defended Alec Baldwin. You know, which I, I can't I can't get that. I don't understand that. Well, out. that's because they don't understand. They keep coming back to the fact that it's an accident. But even in accidents, people are found criminally negligent. You, you accidentally kill somebody, you, that doesn't change the fact that you killed somebody. You that's know? right. That's right. So even though the, the punishment for such a crime would be lesser, it still is a punishment. Mm-hmm. It's not a walk away scot free, and that's what people are not realizing when they when they argue that right. he should be released. Right. I mean, I've heard the most, like people, many people have said to me. I mean, he was just an actor. He's not responsible for making sure the gun didn't have a bullet in it. In which I say, harsh shit. If you pull out a gun and you point it at somebody, you pull the trigger. It's your responsibility to know if there's a bullet in there. It right. doesn't matter if other people were supposed to check before. It falls on you as the person going to pull the trigger to know if there's a bullet in it. Correct. I mean, I can't take a gun from you and then fucking point it at Reese and pull the trigger and go, holy shit, I thought Bodie made sure there yeah. were no bullets in there. Yeah, that's what? all his fault. Yeah, I'm not going to jail because uh, Bodie should have fucking made sure there were no bullets in there. Right. That's not how that works. Yeah, that is not how that works. Agreed. So, Tanner, what do you think? With the, with the fresh voice and the young mind, what do you think about Alec Baldwin? I think that I didn't know what... His situation was until like two seconds ago. Perfect. That is the young generation. Yep. Well, I wrote it out for her on, like on the yeah. on the magic erase board. I so wrote it out for her. She knows now that he killed someone on yeah. a movie set. Correct. Yeah. That he murdered. Someone. Allegedly, we don't know if he murdered her. He could have. He, he's he allegedly was, a lot. Just last because week. he uh, shot someone doesn't mean it was an intentional murder. He could have acted very well. well no, I did write accidentally in the direction, in yeah. the in the instructions. I, I, I feel like... Even unintentional murders are still sure, murder. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, I, 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 personally, of course, I was not there. I feel like he did not intentionally shoot her to murder her, but he still fucking killed her. Okay, remind right. me again. I remember when you did your home movie death thing. Yes. Alec Baldwin was in a previous... Incident. It's his second yeah. one. Oh, yeah, second was time. it also with a gun? No, no, it was a bill. No, actually, it, I mean, I made a joke about it, but he actually wasn't involved in it. I don't <laughs> he was just in the movie. Well, I don't think he was involved oh, in it. The FBI God. didn't do a lot Allegedly. of testing. Allegedly. Yeah, I don't know if the FBI did any testing on that, but uh, a building caught on fire yeah. uh, that they were filming in, and a firefighter who was trying to put out the flames was killed. Oh, okay. oh, That's yeah, what yeah. happened. Okay. Yeah. So whether or not Alec Baldwin, like I said, Alec Baldwin claimed that he took the match out of the box, but he did not strike it, that he just lit <laughs> spontaneously. So I don't know if the FBI tested the box of matches to see if that's possible or not, but right. you know, I didn't I didn't go that deep into you it. You have to detect the sarcasm. Your, your sarcasm detector was probably malfunctioning right. that day. Well, well, he mentioned so many of them. I just wanted right. to... Yeah, I know. I felt like lot, it went on forever. Well, I mean, it did. Forever, a lot, ever. A lot of people got killed <laughs> making movies, and I actually missed some. I found out. Apparently. But, but uh, <laughs> hey, it was it was requested by a listener, so that's why we did it. My Who is this is, listener? Because I want to no, ban him. No, no you can't Listen, ban him. <laughs> everyone stop for a second. My, my point is, because he has been on set, and a, a death has happened on set before... Yes. You would think he would be that much more careful and cautious with things. Number one being a fucking gun. Right. And also a regular gun. Yeah. 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 Well, if, if I can quote, if I can quote Al Pacino from uh, Injustice for All, uh, Alec Baldwin should go right to fucking jail. That's my. Favorite. Who said that, Tarantino? No, Alec uh, Al Pacino. Oh, you, never, you never saw the movie Injustice for no, I didn't Of course, see. he didn't say Alec Baldwin, but uh, <laughs> I sort of inserted that in the dialogue, but you know what I'm... You, you I, get like I like it. Paraphrase. Yeah, yeah paraphrase, yes. Just make it fit wherever it no, fits, that's, right? No, that's right, yep. Yep. Tanner is with us today. Young people. That is... We're going to find out some of the opinions of young people today. We're going to find out what they think. And what's on their mind and what's important to them. Yep. Which should be an interesting... Right. What generation is she? Is she a Generation Z? Ooh, I don't or, know. She's not millennial, no, right? No, she's not a millennial. She's not, is she Generation Z or is she Generation Alpha? That's a good question. I don't, I don't know. know. I, don't know the, I don't know the differences between them, to be honest. Well, hold on. Yeah, I don't know either, to be honest. I'll find out for you. I've never been interested in knowing what generation I am. Yeah. 
That's because all of them after Gen X suck. Correct. Right. <laughs> that is correct. You're in 2005, right? Six. Okay. 2006. All right. Yeah. While you're looking that up, I'm going to kick it off with a question, which is probably rhetorical, but I'm going to ask it anyway. I'm Gen Z. Oh, she's Gen Z. She's barely Gen made Z. Gen Z, but she's Z. barely made Gen Z. Okay, good. So, let me ask you this. Uh, honestly, now, do okay. you and everybody else that you hang out with that's your age believe that people in our generation, that would be Generation X, that were all deep down just a bunch of fucking racist hypocrites, uh, sexist, homophobes, that just deep down that's how we really are, no matter what we say? No, actually. Like, completely honest, me and my friends are actually some of the less hated part of Gen Z, if you would ask me. Because, you know, we're not, oh my god, he said one thing that's so racist, now, you know, we all hate him, he's canceled, like, we're, we're not involved in any of that. So, we don't think that everyone older than us is just like, oh, you're racist, you're homophobic, you're this terrible person. That's just not how any of us think. Wow. But that's your friend group. Is there a large portion of people your age that are like that, though? Hmm. Or is it just a small portion? I think it's less than you think. Yeah? Yeah. Well, it has to be because I think it's all of them. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not. All of them. Yeah, but you have to consider where we're at. Right. Right. We're, we're not in, we're in freaking California. Yeah, we're in the South. That's true. But I can tell you, she has, and I use the term friends loosely, uh, people at her school who she comes home and she's like, oh my God, I have a migraine just from listening to this person talk. <laughs> Correct. Because, you know, somebody touched them on the arm and they were screaming, I've been assaulted. Is that like, like stupid shit like that. Yeah. Like what we actually think they're like. Yeah. Like there are some that are like that. And, and I mean, it bothers her to her core because she's like, it's such bullshit. It's a lie. You're only doing that for attention. You're only saying that for attention or mm -hmm. acting that way for attention. You know how, I mean, we followed one of her friends through from junior high up how one year she was gay, and then one year she was uh, non-binary, and then the next year she was, you know, straight. I, I mean, and it wasn't because this girl was confused about her sexuality. It was, what is the best way I can get attention for myself? Yeah. You know, it's things like that. So, I mean, she's got some lip tards in her school, for sure. <laughs> but as a whole, I don't think it's a her portion. group is a large portion. Right. And it's because of... Us, the, no, the people agree. around in I this agree. area, don't raise their kids like that. I will say, there was a kid last year, so I was a junior, he was a senior, and you would do one thing to him, and his response would always be, it's because I'm black, isn't it? Oh my God. Over and over again. Yeah. Yep. Well, and some people say that as a joke and no. just kind of make and fun like, of it. Right. But other people are more serious when they say right. that. And they're like, that's exactly why you're treating me the way you treat me. You know? I've got friends of mine that'll say that all the time and just laugh it off like it's just funny. You know? You, know, you have one. <laughs> yes. he, he who shall not be named. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have, yeah, sure. I have friends that we joke around about racism. Yeah. You know? I mean, if you have somebody who knows that you're not racist, you can joke around about racism sure. because he knows you don't mean it. Sure. You know? well, I mean, I couldn't make those jokes to, to somebody that I just met five minutes ago. No, no, you, you most know, definitely would, you cannot, know. right. But, uh, yeah, for, for someone that you know and who knows you, who you really are, you you know, where well, you should be able to make those kind of jokes. That's the kind of thing that they actually want to stop. People don't want, you know, I, I feel like the younger generations don't want us to even make those jokes, not even in private, not even with people who don't care that you're making them. Right. You know, I, I, I get that, you know. It's just weird. I, I remember uh, when I was at the casino, I used to work at the casino as a bellman. <clears throat> there was a, uh, a black bellman who was very concerned about uh, offending people all the time, you know. And I remember one, like, we, you'd be on, you know, um, you would take guest luggage and you would store it for them. And then later on when they were ready to leave, you'd bring it out to them and stuff like that. But even if you were the one that stored it and you were busy doing something else, another bellman would have to take over for you and bring the luggage out to them, you know. And so if that was the case, if you were bringing someone else's luggage out to a guest that you had not helped previously, you wouldn't know who they were. So they would say, you know, uh, take it over to Mr. Johnson. And you say, okay, 
what the hell does Mr. Johnson look like? You know, who, who am I looking for? And I, and I remember uh, it was, I was helping Cantrell's, one of Cantrell's guests, and it was, it was a black couple. And so I'm, I, so he, you know, he said, go find whoever, you know, whatever the last name was. So I'm out there looking for him. There's a whole bunch of people around. I can't, I don't see him. I don't know. Who, I don't see anybody who obviously looks like they're waiting for luggage. So I said, Cantrell, you know, oh, you look where insane. are they? You know, who, who, what does he look like? You know, is it a black couple, white couple, what? And uh, eventually we worked it out who they were. And then after I got done, he said to me, I, I said, why didn't you just tell me they were black? And then I could have found them a lot easier. It was a black. Why didn't you just say that? Then it would just narrow down who I had to, to fit. And he was like, well, I didn't want to say, I don't want to be racist. I don't want to say that they were black over the radio. Mm. And I was like, Cantrell, that's not being racist. Telling me what someone looks like is not being racist. Right. You know, I, that's, you know, I mean. Right. I, that, I mean, I, but he, and he meant it. He was like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to say something like that. And I, I was like, what the hell? That's not racist. It's Saying not. a person's color is not inherently racist. It's well, the context. Reese had a friend in junior high. I mean, it, it, he rolled with about five guys. And when I tell you they were the best of friends, they had a sleepover, they all slept over. And this kid was, uh, his mother was white and his dad was black. And his nickname was Caramel. Okay. And he, I mean, this was not like we called him Caramel behind his back. This right. kid would say, hi, I'm Caramel. Right. Because nobody gave a shit that he was mixed. <clears throat> Right. And he didn't care that he was mixed. But nowadays, if anyone would hear that, they'd be like, oh, my God, how can you call him that? Yeah. Or how can you let them call you that? You know, because nobody gave a fuck. Yeah. yeah. You know, it was just a, a nickname a kid gave, and, and then they all thought it was funny, and he liked it, too. I mean, it was, you know, people swore Reese was Chinese when he was growing up. I can see that. And... Oh, yeah. And it used to bother Reese. Yeah. It used to bother him a little, and I'd say, embrace it. Right. Make a bunch of freaking jokes about Chinese people. Say you're smarter than them in math because right. you're Chinese. Well, I said, you know, don't let it bother you. Be racist. Yeah. yeah. Got it. So, <laughs> That's what we teach ours. <laughs> sure. You know, if yeah. people are just giving you a race that's not you, just be racist. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it, it is ridiculous because you know that's the first thing people jump to. Yeah, is... the worry, the worry about offending people amazes me. You know, yeah, having ridiculous. to worry about that, like Jesus Christ, there's a lot of I'm worry about getting mugged. Don't worry about offending someone. So you know, the funniest part about that story is I don't remember Caramel's real name. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic, actually. He doesn't even know the real name of Caramel. Love it. And they only lost touch because he moved away. Yeah. So, just so y'all know. I also enjoy to have friends who are all different colors and nationalities. Because you can, if you have a true friendship, like, and I think we've talked about this before. I have a really good friend named Gavin. He is a gay black man. And he, we had a very intelligent conversation about racism and about race. And it lasted for, like, an hour. Yeah, it was a long conversation. And nobody got offended. Right. We got to, he asked us questions. We asked him questions. Right. I mean, it was some, some of them were personal questions, you know, like, you know, how does it feel to be this and what it, you know, but nobody got offended when you can have those kind of conversations. I think that's healthy for of everybody. Course. We should all, and it's like this. I'm going to say it like Morgan Freeman said, Morgan Freeman said, racism will always be an issue as long as we're talking about it. As long as we make it an issue. Is going to continue to be an issue, right? If we stop talking about it and stop acting like it matters, then it will no longer be an issue, right? You know, right? It's just that simple. Right. That isn't good if for you, the media, if though. If you judge people <laughs> based on their character and their quality as a human being, and not based on any other aspect, then it won't be an issue, right? Which yep. is what I try to do. I try to hold people to. Just what their character is, not what they look like. Well, that brings me to the sexuality argument, okay? Uh, it used to be a big deal, are you gay or are you not gay? Yeah, it right? used to be a big and, and deal. And now it's yeah. really not a big deal, except that it has gone so far. Like, they use every letter of the alphabet. You don't know what the fuck it means. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, literally, there is... I feel like, yeah, I feel like hom uh, heterosexual is the new homosexual, if that makes sure. sense. Sure. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's the way they want it to be. Right. A small portion, a very small minority of the populace wants to take over and 
make the majority into the minority. And they do that by uh, saying that you have to say things the way that they want you to say them. You have to treat them the way that they want you to treat them. You have to, not only with them, but with other people, you have to ask them what their pronouns are. And I'm not doing all of that. I'm right. just not. It's not because I disrespect you as a person or what your choices are. It's because I do things the way I do things. Just like you do things the way you do things, I do the same thing. And we should both have, both have, that same respect for one another. Yep. I respect you. If you want to go in the back closet and put a pole in your mouth, you respect me when I don't want to say z zim zay they fuke they. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Just that simple. Also, it really bothers me that uh, whenever I don't like something, a situation I'm in, or a movie I didn't like, with, I don't like the fact that people don't want me to say, oh, that was gay. Yeah. That's how I criticize things. I say, that, that is gay. If I can't say things are gay, what can I say they are? Yeah, it's the, well, I don't I mean, like it. I don't like it. They want Stupid. you to make up another word because before yep. there was gay, there was another word. Bad. And after <laughs> there's gay, there'll be another word. Yep. You know, I mean, it's just it's just one of those passing trends. Right? That's the way things just go. Just not yeah. good. And people get upset about it. Yeah, except I'm going to tell you this. Uh, we know a lot of gay people. First of all, our son is gay. And we have a lot of gay members in our family, and we have gay friends. And you know who doesn't get fucking offended by gay saying people. that is gay? Gay people. That is absolutely true. You know true. who say the biggest gay slurs? Gay people. Yeah. True. So, true. Big facts. True. Big facts. For somebody to go on TV because they don't know what kind of sexuality they are, and to preach to me is bullshit because when I'm around the actual people it's supposed to offend and it doesn't offend them, then fuck you, bitch. Oof. Oof. You know what I don't understand? Wow. People who don't know Big what sexuality words. they are. If I show you a picture of a naked woman and then I show you a picture of a naked man, which one gave you an erection? That's what you are. Or which one made you excited? Right? That's, that's, that's well, how what you, if you don't have the tools to get an erection? Well, that's a whole other discussion. That's a whole other discussion. I was like, God, just leave women out all the time. Right. Well, I mean, if well, you, you know what I mean. Well, if which you, one gets if you, you get, excited? You, right, yeah. If you right. look and dress like a man, why are you offended if I say he? Right. Yeah. Uh, that's what you come right. off as. Right. 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 You know, I mean, and I, I, that's what I don't understand. I, I should have to, that is not a normal way of life to go up to someone and say, excuse me, what are your pronouns so that I can right. have a conversation with you? Right. right. No. Do you have a problem with that? Yeah. Does that offend you? No, I don't think, I, I almost don't know what to say because none of it makes, none of it makes sense to me. I don't understand how it's such a problem for so many people when nobody cares. Like well, that's reality, not true. People do care. But that's, I don't no, understand what you're saying why they you care. care. Yeah, they yeah there yeah, is they a shouldn't. small portion, there, there is a small portion of people who are homophobes and yeah. who are yeah. transphobes. Yes, yes. There Correct. Is a small but wait, who, why, who cares? Who The people who are saying, call me, these are my pronouns, or the people who are saying, I don't give a shit that you want particular pronouns? I mean, both, I guess, because... More more of the people who want you to know what their pronouns are and feel like you have to call them by those pronouns because in reality, all you want is attention. And so it's like, just shut up, let me talk to you, okay. how I know you. Especially, and I, ha I know someone who I've known since elementary school and they have become non-binary, I believe. And so now they're a they. And I I keep saying her, she it's because really hard. that's how I know them. Right. Like it's it's difficult for people and I don't think that you know transgender people or non-binary people or you know the pronoun people, I don't think they understand that. And they they want you to just immediately switch it up. Well, oh, I agree with me, that, 100%. Me, and it's it's not fair. Right. Let me ask you this. Like, when you and your friends are joking around all by yourselves in the schoolyard or whatever. In all, the schoolyard. Wow. You know, this schoolyard. This, we don't even get to go outside yeah, during they, school. They don't get to go outside because people shoot at them. So, <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. They will get shot. Maybe in the hallway. Use the hallway. When you talk, Jesus When Christ. you're in the schoyard, like so, we were in the 50s. So, uh, <laughs> like, whenever you see somebody, you go, oh, my God, look at that fag over there. Or, or is that like a taboo? Like y'all would never say something like that? 
That's what I'm trying to get at. Like, is it? I wouldn't say anything like that. I, know, I, I wouldn't either. You wouldn't? No. I uh, personally don't. I do. I but you're an asshole. Don't cancel But me. I know I people. Know. I know my friends' friends. Yeah. They all. That's how they talk to each other. Okay, they do. They do that. Yeah. Okay, that's what I'm trying to get at. All right. Oh. Yeah, I would call one of my friends that. That's what right. I'm saying. Yeah, it, That's what I'm saying. I would definitely do Oh, that. I thought you were talking... The way you made it sound... Oh, yeah. yeah. It was like you you saw someone across the way and you're like, oh, my God. I, I said whenever such you and your friends were sitting around talking. Oh, no, but... No, you, but then you came you off and saying somebody, somebody across the way. I said it wrong? Yeah. Well, okay, so, like, y'all aren't so, like, sensitive to that kind of thing that y'all don't... Like, uh, they could call each other yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah. you didn't totally do that. I make it sound like But we're not going to just go and call somebody else that. Right. That's what it made you sound right. like. Yeah. That's what it okay. sounded like yes. you were saying. Okay, well, oh, in my, my defense, damn, Chris. Uh, our generation did do that. <laughs> <laughs> Many times when I was in school, we did such sure. a Sure. And you know what? But you know what, though? When we, were, when we were going through grade school, it was different because the homosexual population felt like they needed to hide and act like they were not homosexual. Yes. So it was always a slur or a way for us to bully them or to cut them down or insult them, even if they weren't, just by calling them homosexual. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess now, being that everybody's all out in the open and not not even just out in the open, but poo wide open, like they want to punch you in the mouth with it. Yeah. <laughs> now, because that's a thing, it's less. Of a slur, I think. Yeah. Because they would just be like, yeah, so what? I'm up, my son sitting right here walks around telling people, I'm gay. I'm gay. I'm gay. Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. I'm gay. <laughs> like, legit. Right, right. That's how it is. Right. You know? That's how it rolls. Yep. And it wasn't that way back then. Nope. You know? Correct. That's However, right. this is an interesting thing that happened to me when my gay son was in high school. He was probably a freshman at the time, and... This kid was on the swimming team with him, and he, this kid was probably a, a senior. He was driving, had his own vehicle and everything, and his dad was known as the cool dad, right? He had all these teenage parties at his house and everything, and so everybody liked him. He bought the alcohol for everyone, which, in my opinion, if, like, Tanner would be uh, going to these... Are we supposed to say this on the phone? Probably not. <laughs> probably not. Right. Would you just let me get to the point? Well, uh... So, like, if Tanner was going to this guy's house, I'd be concerned, like, uh, this is a grown-ass man that... Why is he buying alcohol for all these girls? However, this was not the point he had with me. He called me to tell me that he didn't know if I was aware that my son was gay and that he needed me to tell my son to stop contacting his son because kids were mean. And he yeah. didn't want people to think his son was gay. Right. So oh, he I felt that was the way to handle it, okay. was to call me and say, tell your son, stop, you know, snapping my, my son. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what, dude? There's ways that your son can stop that. Right. Why are you having the yeah. conversation with me? Here's the reality, buddy. Here's a reality check for you. You don't know if we know if our son is gay. <laughs> guess what? We know our son's gay. Do you know yours is? Right. That's right, what right. I wanted to ask. Right, you. right. Yeah. Because right. you're telling us to tell our son to stop reaching out to your son. But guess what? <laughs> if your son wasn't gay, he would know how to stop that. <laughs> That's correct. He wouldn't that need is, you to do it for him. That is correct. But see, that's the reality. Some people can accept it. Some, some people, people can't. can't. Right. You know? That's right. And you would, I, I mean, this shocked me, and I only know this because my kids are in school. I mean, girls are binding their breasts. Yes. They're, they're asking to be, and I mean, I never thought it would happen like here. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because we're so. In the deep south. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Uh, when Cameron was in high school, she had a friend who was a biological female and they were giving this kid <laughs> steroids because she wanted to be a guy so uh cameron was friends with this kid i had no problem with that not not at all do what you want to do that's your yep. business and i found out like at this kid's house they were calling her he and him and whatever once again i don't give a shit what you do at your own house but i told my daughter cameron well you can't go sleep at this person's house. She said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, I wouldn't let you go sleep at a boy's house. I'm not letting you go sleep at a girl who thinks she's a boy's house. at her house. Right. That's basically like you're yeah. sleeping at a boy's house. You can't have sleepovers with a boy. 
Right now, that's that simple. And she, I mean, she it, she could not get that because I know in her head she's thinking, but she is a girl, right? You know, right. And and she had a hard time with me. Tell, I said, you're welcome to go over there, spend time, you know, hang out, but you're not sleeping there. And I mean, she had a, ta- a hard time understanding it. But the truth is, you can't have it both ways. You can't go to school and say, well, I just I want to be this and I want to be considered this and that sure. and this. But then you know. When you're at home in private with your it's, friends or whatever, right. you know, well, I can get dressed in front of you because I have boobs just like you. Well, I mean, well, I understand it. what you think you are is what you are, right? Isn't that, isn't that how they do it? Which is why I want y'all from now on to call me the heavyweight champ of the world. Right. Jesus yeah. Christ. I would like you to call me <laughs> the billionaire. Got it. Got yeah. it. Yep. Yeah, but thinking doesn't make it true. Well, that's not uh, that's, what I hear. That's not how it works. That's not what I hear. That's yeah. not how it works. If I identify as a billionaire, then that's I right. am a billionaire. That's right. Just that simple. Right. Tanner? That's how they see it. Right. That's correct. Okay. Who did not silence their phone? Somebody was told to silence their phone and they can never come to the house again. We are not allowing that person nope, ever to ever. sit in on the recording. Ever. This again. is the youth of today. Yep. That's all I'm they saying. They can't listen to it. Yep, you can't touch Simple okay. instructions. Well, this, this, uh, well we, int- we got to introduce them now. Yeah, this is uh, Bryce. He who shall never be in the house again. That's what we call him now. <laughs> Uh, but actually, that I'm glad that happened because that actually uh, brings up a, another question for the younger generation, and that is, uh, let's say that uh, all cell phones stop working tomorrow, uh, could you continue to live life? That's a stupid question. No, no that's a good question. No, no, no. no, 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 no. I think I think you worded it wrong. Uh, I think is uh, could you go without being on your phone? Could you go without yeah, Snapchat? Right, that's what I just could said. Could you go without <laughs> TikTok? And... Yeah, and it's what you just said. By <laughs> that's not what you said. <laughs> Like, are you talking to, like, me personally or, like, my generation? Both. Me personally, absolutely. I was doing it for forever. I didn't even get a phone till I was, what, 13? But we're talking now. And I, yet now you can't yeah, watch a movie thought, without also looking right. at your I phone. I thought I told you you Yes, to I be can. Honest. A good movie absolutely can. Not an Uncle Chris movie. Huh? Yeah, no, I, not I, an Uncle Chris I movie. I thought she did watch Kingdom of the Spiders without looking at her phone. I was going to recommend that one night. Like, did you like um, it? No. <laughs> no. I did not. Yeah. That well, movie went you know, nowhere. I just saw some, and I brought this also point. Also me did not also. I yeah, Bryce this. was also there for that. He also watched did, it with did us. Did you like it? No. Would you he like to tell it. us, including the listeners, who Bryce is? Would you like to oh, identify okay. Bryce for the, for the group since <laughs> he's now involved? Bryce is my now boyfriend. Oh. He's younger than me. He's 16. She's cougaring. Oh. I am cougaring. <laughs> He's her boyfriend for now. Yes. I just want to point that out. <laughs> no, he's locked in. You heard the words. Yes, locked she in. Is, he is locked in. He is locked so, in. are we going to answer the question? Yes. Okay, so you said. I did. You I said, know? me personally, I, right. I absolutely could. Okay, I think that's a lie. So, now, uh, what's the generational answer? I think my generation would struggle. <laughs> because we. I actually had a whole conversation with one of my teachers about this because he asked a kind of similar question. Mm-hmm. But I think that our us, like my generation as a society, already doesn't know how to speak to each other. We don't know mm-hmm. how to use social cues. We have no idea what's going on around us. We don't know how to see certain things that we we should be seeing. We can't read body language. We don't know all this because we're constantly over a phone talking to each other. Instead of talking to each other face to face, yeah. So I think that in itself would make <coughs> our, my generation struggle without phones, because we literally wouldn't know how to talk to each other. Right, that's correct. Because every interaction that you have now is over the takes phone. place digitally. Right. Yeah. But on a funny note, we were told by somebody that is in your generation that they're the smart that y'all are the smartest generation. Oh, absolutely not. We are she said because not. it's at her fingertips. Yeah, Any information fingertips. Yep. that she wants, Wikipedia and Google is at her fingertips. And we were like, what? Yeah, if you want to know the Do circumference you know to... of the Saturn rings, you will know it just by typing it in. But that I don't makes think you that, smart. Yeah, but you that don't know how to use a dictionary or, or, you know, card No, it doesn't block. make you smart. That absolutely no, does not it absolutely make us smart. Not. It, it makes Google smart. It makes us you. dumber, actually, That's in my it opinion. It does, Because yes. we don't need to learn any of these things because it, we have it. My daughter is bright. You make me so proud. And you know, oh actually, so I like we, when I ask a person a question and they give me the answer that I already had in my head. I love it. So Let her finish. We... Actually, we're talking about this, not not this, but we were talking the other day in 
class about, you know, de- testing scores and stuff because in high school you take the ACT and mm-hmm. it's a big mm-hmm. deal because that's what gets you into colleges and whatever, whatever. Well, in other parts of the country it's SAT, but right. go ahead. but here it's ACT. And um, she mentioned that ever since COVID, students have gotten slower with answering tests and we've hmm. gotten dumber. And yeah, so no argument here. Now we are having to work things into our everyday classwork just to be able to get us back up to the speed we were before. To be able to take things like the ACT that are timed and you have 50 seconds to answer a question in science. Oh, that's because Why I do you didn't think have to because it was hybrid. Why do you think that is? That we're slower? Yeah. Because we're we're never expected to do those things, you know? In because you're not actually learning, you're learning how to find stuff as opposed right. to actually learning how Correct. stuff works or what it does or what the facts are. Right. Like you don't have to learn multiplication anymore because you got a calculator. Exactly. Oh, you have Apple Watch. Or you have an Apple Watch. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's a lot. I mean, Berwick personally, we've been. Losing teachers, getting new teachers every year. I mean, my older siblings that are a few years older than me have no idea who's even at school anymore. They don't know any teachers there because everyone has changed. And I think that a lot of the people that are now becoming teachers suck are easily manipulated by students. They get walked all over. Hmm. So if the student says, hey, I want to have a movie day today. You know, we've been working so hard this week. They put on a movie and we have not gotten anything done throughout the week. Nothing. Yeah, but this is how stupid people are. Like, and I'm talking about like the education system. I I saw this, and I didn't really read into it because I just, I, I it was so dumb, and I believed it. There was no need to even look at the facts. But one school took down the mirrors in their bathrooms, so kids would stop taking TikTok videos. Jesus Christ. Um. Okay. Mirrors, take them down, or how about no phones while in school? Like, that would be our generation. Well, what is the problem? The phone is the problem. Not the fucking mirror. Right. Yeah. But their their solution to kids are on their phones at school was, well, let's take down the mirrors. Well, guess what, bitch? You can have a mirror on your fucking phone. I mean, it's stupid. You don't, you know, like, that's how, but that's the generation that's now running everything. Mm-hmm. But and they're you, running you also system. have it incorrect because the phone is not the problem. The kid is the problem. Huh. Yeah, but but because kids are now allowed to have that phone almost as if it's like underwear. I, I can't go anywhere without it. I, yeah. I have to have and it. They, they're getting younger and younger getting too. The fact that they're allowed to have it at all times it is it's yeah. a crutch. Right. I think I think uh Schools should do like some movie theaters do and have cell phone jammers. Well, I, mean, I agree with that. Our, in our parish, you get in trouble if you have a school. Of course, that'll work. Until, I mean, uh, if you have a phone at school during, yeah, you know, uh, working class hours. If they if they try to take phones from students, parents would pitch a fit. They'd be, oh, I paid a thousand dollars for this phone. Yeah, no. so you they can't did do that. that. You no, can't they do did that. that. And it used to be like you, the first time was ten days, the second yeah. time was like a month. And and I think parents must have bitched because sure, of course. Phones were getting taken away. Now it's, we take your phone and your parent has to come pick it up. Yeah, yeah. But you don't get it till the, well, that's the end the, of the day. That's where the cell phone jammer comes in. However, well, so I'm, you're at least making the parent be accountable because I'm not releasing this phone to your kid. Yeah. You know, you, you have to come and, and say, but the point is, we go to another parish and you got kids walking around the hallways with phones in their hands because it is completely allowed to have phones. Right. During school. I, like... There's, it's, there's no more rules anymore. It used to be you went to school, you learned. Right. Well, I do want to interject here because I personally do keep my phone on me during school. Now it's off. It's in my letterman. I don't ever pull it out. But I have it because last year we were constantly doing evacuations and we were constantly having bomb threats. <laughs> and I would text my parents because... Sometimes the school wouldn't notify them until after everything happened. Yep. Oh, damn. well, she literally thought she was going to die one well, day. Like they they got put on lockdown, 
and they had no reason, they did not know why. Yeah. Okay. So she thought, this is how it ends, and I won't even be able to say goodbye to my parents. Okay, well, well, let me elaborate on that, because it's not exactly what happened. We went on lockdown, and I, this happens, you know, periodically throughout the year, because they have to do constant drills, whatever. But usually the drills would last for maybe five minutes, and that was it, and it was over, and everybody would go back to class, and it was fine. But this time, it lasted, I remember me and my friend sat there staring at my watch, because it felt so long, and it lasted over an hour. Hmm. We were just sitting in a dark classroom, the door was locked, you know, normal lockdown things, and I was like, I've never been in a lockdown that wasn't real and lasted this long. And, you know, all I was thinking about was, I should have my phone on me. I should be able to text my parents and let them know what's going on. And, you know, if something were to happen, this is it. Yeah. It ends in a school classroom. Yes, that is the argument against school jams. If someone starts shooting up the school, then, yeah, then that's the problem. But the thing is, that happens I'm now. willing to live with it. Stop mm. it. That's because you don't have kids. <laughs> yeah, but she doesn't pull her phone out and use well, it. She yeah. has that's... her phone on her. Yep. Off. Being an and in case of an emergency. <laughs> and I don't think she's ever had to use it since yeah. then. I yeah. mean, but but that's the difference between having it out. Yeah. Right. And it's also the difference between teaching your child to be responsible. True. And not, and just letting your kid just do whatever the hell they want to do all, all day long, every day. Yeah. Again, it boils down to the kid and not the phone itself. That's right. Well, Just correct. like it's not guns that kill people. It's correct. people with guns that kill people. Correct. That <laughs> and is a fact. The whole thing about the rules is it doesn't matter if there's rules or not because the kids who are going to break them are going to break them regardless. Yeah. So, whoever has their phone out, if they want to have their phone out, they're going to have their phone out, even if there's a rule against it. That's true. Fact. They that already do. It true. happens now, so. Here's a scenario for you, and, and this is what I thought about when it comes to having her phone and the reason why I tell her it's okay to keep it in your pocket, because they tell you to put it in your locker and not to take it out. Mm -hmm. I said keep it in your pocket or somewhere in your book sack or somewhere it's close by, because if there is a mass shooting. Someone comes and shoots up the place, and she's locked in a classroom under lockdown, and she can't get out, and she doesn't want to get out because who knows what danger lies in the hallway. Mm -hmm. And for God forbid, the Uvalde effect yes. takes place, yes. Yes. and people are scared to death to go in there and save her. I'm going to get her myself. Right. You understand? You got a posse right here. So we're on our way. If she was to call me and say, We're locked in here and we hear gunshots, guess who's coming? Right. It's just that simple. Now, I'll I'll allow the law enforcement to do their job and get out of the way and not be in the way and all of that stuff, but if, if it comes down to it, I'm going in and getting my job. Mm -hmm. So that's why I advocate for the use of that in that particular circumstance, but she knows not to use it when she's not supposed to. Yeah. There's also a new drill in place that they did this year that was something about, like, if we have a school shooter or whatever and we, like, find out where they are in the school and whatnot, certain classes will, like, leave at a time and, like, go out windows and then we all have to run past the tree line and a bus will come pick us up from, like, Renwick. Okay. Who hatched this plan? Because I want their name. Let me, let me tell you something. When the, when the bullets great. start flying, there ain't going to be none of that foolishness. There's not going to be organization at yeah, all. None of that shit's going to happen. Yeah. No, but me I hate personally, the fact that you have to do this. I hate that. Well, first of all, most school shooters are students at the school. Yep. So chances are that the arm's going to shoot it up, already knows the plan, and has yep. probably strategized yep. against the plan. Yep. How about that? That's something to chew on for a minute. I hate that they right? have to do that these That's days. Why I hate that. I am an advocate for private homeschooling. Huh. School public, school public schools. Yeah. Homeschooling is the way to go, people. You heard it here. That's, but, that's that's fair, but that know. takes away your but social what? interaction. Okay, yeah, you have no more... social interaction. What? That's not true. What do you mean? How does she not have social interaction? She sits in a classroom with thirty other kids for She's an hour and a half every day, five times a day. Yeah, yeah she I'm also in stressed band. out. She hates the libtards that go to her school. People... That's my school. Yeah. <laughs> I hate my school. I don't. I don't hate school as. Okay, because how many other schools have you been to, to compare? <laughs> 64. Patterson? 
You went to Patterson? No. I went to Hattie Watts. Oh my God! Parents who don't know anything okay. about their children. Okay, pre-K. She went to pre-K at be... another school, and that is what she's comparing all of the schools to. Her pre-K school. <laughs> to be fair, she's not wrong. I went to the same school. I'm just saying they had a toilet in her pre-K class. Okay, you can't compare the schools to that. Oh, in that's the all classroom? Well, well, there was well, a bathroom. Was, in there between. was two classrooms and a bathroom in between. That's legit. What? I got walked in uh, on by someone in the other classroom. Not cool. You had to lock either. both doors. Not cool. That's legit. Oh, I think that's awesome. That's like a college. Suite. It's a college dorm. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I lived in in college. Was a suite. That's yeah. brilliant because pre-K kids need some help with the bathroom sometimes and. Do they? I gotta go like yeah, every five what? minutes. <laughs> I'm not in. You realize pre-K is like four. Yeah, I realize. I didn't I'm go not to, helping children. I didn't go to pre-K. I didn't go <laughs> but I'm not helping nobody. What is that? Well, that's their Did job. Did you have to have help with the bathroom? <laughs> I don't think so. Thank God. No, that's because you've always been smart. Okay. Well, I'm not gonna embarrass her on the podcast. Yeah, so. please don't. Whoa. Please don't. Please no. Please don't. no. That's not what we're about. We don't want to yeah. embarrass people that we're not related to. And we're then we don't want. We're not about that noise. No. All right, what other hard-hitting questions does anybody okay. have for me? Actually, I, I, mine aren't really hard-hitting questions. Are we interviewing me now? Yeah. yeah, yeah. What do you mean? We've been interviewing you. We've been asking you all the questions. Oh, I see. Um, <laughs> what the hell? I've just been talking. Does your generation have a hard time keeping up with current events? No. <laughs> I think you're wrong. Oh. I think you do. Y'all's generation does have a, a problem keeping up with current events. You didn't even know like, I was going like, to kill someone. We're, talk, we're talking like... Po- not politics, but like in the world. The thing, it, it depends because I know at least two of the teachers at my school bring up current events daily. Oh, that's good. Like one of them, he's an amazing teacher and he every day makes us write down current events and we look up an article on a current event and we have to, you know, make notes and tell everyone in the class about it. Oh, that's legit. I like that. So he constantly is bringing the current world into our lessons. So he didn't know Alec Baldwin got killed? killed and then, up. well, I don't have him anymore. Yeah, but you know what? I wonder if she did know about it and has forgotten because it some time has passed since the incident has happened. Yeah. You know what I want to know? Was name. something had, that has come across name. my social media recently. A lot of people are curious why Gypsy Rose has become such a hot topic and why is she... A hero to the young generation. I know why. I'm not asking you. I'm asking the youth. I want to hear what she has to say before I say anything. Because deep down, most children want to kill their parents. Oh, okay. Ooh. Whoa. That's dark. I think Ooh. That's very dark. I think that's really wrong. <laughs> In fact, I think that is very, very wrong. I think a lot of kids nowadays are dependent on their parents. So why are they going to? Kill them if they need them. Ooh, that's so a good bad. I think only kids aren't dependent on their parents. I think young adults are dependent on their parents well, too. That's what I mean. I yeah. mean, like, I, I mean, I, I call myself a kid. But do you think that Gypsy Rose should have killed her mom? I would have. I don't. I don't necessarily. I don't want to say she should have, but if I was in that position, I would have. Okay, except that she got somebody to do her dirty work for her. I probably would have done that. And too. not only did she do that, <laughs> I can't. She sit there and set kill my him mom. up. She set him up to take the fall. Like, this wasn't just, oh, my God, I'm getting abused. This is, fuck this shit. I want to live my own life now the way I want to live it. Let me find a patsy. And and I go, and guess what? She pretty much got her fucking way. Yep. And what she did was. Ruined the guy's life. She said, hey, I'm going to be all of these little role play people that you want. We're going to do all these sexual fantasies. I'm going to be your huckleberry for whatever it is that you want in the world. Yeah. As long as you can do this for me, we can be together forever. She she tantalized him with sexual favors and made him do what she wanted him to do. Right. And mailed the knife to his house. And he's obviously psychologically inferior. Yeah. To begin with. Right. Actually, his, he, when she brought up the whole idea of killing his, her mom, um, she, he was like, you can't ask this personality, you have to ask the other one. Mm -hmm. And so she was like, okay, well, I'm, you know, he, and so he stepped forward, I guess you would say. Right, came into the light. Right. 
<laughs> and um, <sighs> she said, would you help me kill my mom? And he said, I have two conditions. One, it has to be with a knife. And two, you have to let me rape her after. <gasps> and she said, absolutely not. You're not raping my mom. It's not happening. And he said, well, then let me rape you. And that she agreed to. Except she wasn't raped. Right. Correct. That's right. She was yeah, not you can't, raped. You can't, just, just for, you know, quick reference so that you can have it in your mind. You can't rape someone who says it's okay to rape them. Right. It's not possible. There's video that she took of herself and him in the hotel room where she's like, yeah, you're eating that banana now, but you could be eating me in a little while. That's not getting raped. Why okay? is the name Rose McGowan suddenly just came <laughs> in my head? Oh, my God. Maybe that was one of her. <laughs> they, that's who she looked up to. Oh, my God. You missed the joke. No, I know exactly. But what I'm saying is <laughs> she was so cunning that she convinced him she also had multiple personality yeah, yeah. disorder. Right. Yes, because she was fitting into his That's correct. way of thinking and his right. she was conning him. Yes. I'm going to be honest. I mean, when I first heard the story, I mean, I'm not, I did, never did a deep dive into the Gypsy Rose thing, but when I first heard about what happened, I was like, yeah, I'd have killed my mom too if she had put me through all that bullshit. But now that I know this all this other bullshit she did in order to get her mom killed. Like, I like if she had just like taken a knife herself and just like stabbed her mom to death. I'm like, okay, she snapped. She couldn't. Yeah, in a right. That'd have been, right. that'd have been, sure. a, that'd have been her, a different situation. Her, her mom had Munchauser pro, um, by proxy. Munchauser yes. by proxy. Yes. yes. However, don't disagree with that. You can't. No, I'm not. That. However, no, I, I think there was a point when Gypsy understood. Man, I'm getting some shit out of this, mm -hmm. and it, you know. It's not that bad because well, that, when I'm at home, I can walk around and do what I want. But hey, I get free trips to Disney, and right. I get to meet these celebrities, and I get to. And now she's she's famous. See, I think it's almost the opposite. I think she was thinking that way, and then she came to a point where she realized I'm not going to be able to go out into the world. I'm not going to ever be able to live my life the way I want to. She and could have she told her dad. Can I finish? Yes. <laughs> and she didn't know how to get out of that. Because sometimes that happens. You get stuck in this point where you're like, okay, well, if I do this, there are so many consequences that do I really want to make that choice? Okay, well, let me ask you this. So, well, first of all, her dad was in and out of her life, but she was able to call him, talk to him, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So that was number one person she should have been able to go to. Number two, the first time she ever met this boy in person, she took him in the bathroom at the movies and fucked him. Like, Ooh. that is, that is hardcore. That is, I have a plan for you. I need to hook you right now. I, I That's can't... diabolical. That is not like, I can't live this life anymore. Please help me. She didn't go in the bathroom and beg him to help her. She fucking, I mean, everything she did was a plan to kill her mom. I think that she was broken. I truly, if my mom put me through so many things, told me I had leukemia, got my teeth pulled, got me a hysterectomy, all these different things to me, and she literally, I mean, I don't know, you're supposed to trust your parents, and I think that she was so scared to say something, and I'm not saying that she's right, because I don't think she is either, but I think that she had, a, her mom did a mind fuck on her, and I think that, for lack of a better word, a bond fuck is, I think, the best word to use. But I think that she was so broken that she couldn't put her pieces back together. And the only thing that she thought to, that she could do was kill her. I mean, She was too diabolical for right? that. I mean, I, I feel like I, I can understand why she killed her mom. I, I get it. But the fact that she was going to, her plan was to ruin another human being's life in order yeah. to do it is where it's she fucked. went wrong. Right. Yeah. Because no, she, like, step number one, get rid of the knife. Right? Yeah, I mean, why, no, she, she mailed it to the his Kardashians house. The Kardashians are still alive. She could have easily gotten rid of the knife. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying. She she wanted to have a fall guy. Yeah. I'll and she's right the one who went on the internet and said, oh, I just raped her daughter. And, you know, yeah. he didn't do that. Yeah. She brought yeah. attention to everything. And yeah. she it was a very big master... It wasn't even like, oh my God, now i got to think of something. He just killed my mom. <laughs> right. And, yeah, and it was then, the long con. The, yeah. The premeditated long con right. that got her to where she wanted to be in the end run. But to say that she really had... really is evil. 
evil. Right. And to say she had no other... Well, there was no one I could tell. What do you mean? You told this fucking stranger and you convinced him to kill your mommy. Yet you're saying you never could reach out to anybody? Like, that's bullshit. When you and go then, to the movies, all you have to do is stand up and walk away. Right. <laughs> that's all you gotta no, do. No, that's right. It's really that's that exactly easy. exactly right. If yeah. you want to out yourself to the world, stand up. Yeah. That's the easy solution in my mind. But, and what bothers me too is the boy's mom, because they went to his house after and lived there, went, I never thought her mom was dead. Like, she was so normal and happy mm -hmm. and n nothing seemed to be bothering her. How do you, it, and yet, of course, now she says, well, I wish she wouldn't have died. I wish I, I wish she wouldn't have gotten killed. But she never showed remorse. Never. Yep. I don't know. Yeah, I just think I just filthy. I just think that she's so like just damaged, like beyond damaged. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I feel sorry for her, but yet I condemn her at the same time. I think that's the easiest way for me to explain. Like I feel sorry for what her mom put her through because sure. her mom had a sickness as well. Sure, I and mean, I we think all that, feel that. And I think, but I just think that yes, she went about it absolutely the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, but she's yeah. now out of jail, living her life, and in the in the spotlight, while this guy is going to spend the rest of his life in jail, and I don't even think he knows. And I'm going to tell you there's a problem with that as well. And it, it, I, the fact that she's becoming so popular, which is what made me ask the question yes. in the beginning, why the youth find her basically a heroine. Um, the problem with that now is that you are not allowed to financially benefit from murder. Right. So... If she becomes, she's talking about now about writing books and biographies mm -hmm. and making all this money and doing all these things on Instagram. You know, she's very popular now. Once she starts to financially gain from this popularity, there's going to be issues. Yep. So. Yeah, she's you know. not allowed to go back to the state that she was Well, Illinois except that something? she's married now. So, you know, uh, it, it doesn't take a genius to say like, well, we'll you sell the rights. Name. Yeah. Yeah. You know, don't put it where I'm not actually getting any money. I mean, there's yeah, ways around saying, everything. It's a complex, it's a it complex animal. She better be careful. Yeah. Well, OJ got a book written. Yeah. About how he did not commit murder. Right. So maybe that's, maybe that's yeah, what she's going to do. Yeah, but fiction. Yeah, so maybe she's going to go that route. <laughs> if, if it worked for OJ, right. it could yeah, work we for me. Just, we could just call it fiction. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. Tanner. You've been a star. I'm very impressed with how bright you are and how articulate you are. I appreciate you being here today. I can't believe she's going to college. I appreciate you guys having me here. Awesome. Awesome. Yep, yep I enjoy it. Yep. Good job. Interviews. We're going to do more interviews this season. Not every episode, but... Uh, yeah. Just, I think it's nice to have some fresh blood around, especially sure. someone who's not exactly in our mind frame because we're mm -hmm. all in the same mind frame pretty much yeah. give or take right right so to have a fresh viewpoint I'm the baby is, of the group. Uh, <laughs> That's it's nice. pretty pretty nice yeah i'm never the baby of the group but i am in this group <laughs> like believe it or not we also plan to bring on some pretty raging democrats at no some we point. do plan and, uh, yeah they keep chicken them out they're afraid they're gonna lose the uh arguments i think yeah. is what it is he's talking about you ashton <laughs> Yeah. Get your ass over here. Come <laughs> to Franklin. But anyway, it'll happen. It'll yeah, happen. We'll, 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 we'll I look forward to it. We're gonna, yeah, it's going to be fun. It will be fun. It'll be very No, fun. it's, he's, him and Chris he's together. He's a mofo. That's yeah. All. The three of y'all together, I don't think that I'm prepared for, so. <laughs> all right, so uh, another episode down. I'm going to go yeah. ahead and do my movie recommendation. I got a real one. I got oh, a one of my favorite chef's kiss tonight. No, it's tonight. one of my favorite movies. Movie time. So, yep. Yeah. So there's a very famous quote from this movie, which I'm going to go ahead and say it's a, you know, it's a little life lesson, uh, the main character says in the movie, and that is uh, simply, uh, no matter where you go, there you are. There you are. Right. That's right. Yep. That's words. I want to get that. I want to get that as a tattoo. Words to live by. So uh, for those of you who don't know that uh, quote, the movie is The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension, which came out in 1984. That's a winner. That, that that's a winner, people. Is a winner. If you can't remember the title, everybody just calls it Buckaroo Bonsai. Yeah, that's what everybody calls, calls it, Bonsai. Buckaroo Bonsai. The Adventures of Buckaroo Bonsai. It's Across the Eighth Dimension. Across the yeah. Eighth Dimension. It's got, uh, oh, oh, go ahead. What year? From 1927? 1984. 1984. Oh, 84. 84. Boy, yep. You are becoming a lot more 
current. It's relevant. So the interesting <laughs> thing about this movie is it flopped when it came out. Uh, because As sometimes, sometimes audiences are dumbasses and they don't Correct. go see the right movie. Correct. Sometimes so they, audiences like good movies. Yep. <laughs> so they didn't go see this, so it flopped. However, once it hit VHS and that whole thing, it became you know it became very popular. Uh, uh, VHS. Uh, yes, that's correct. Know, it's a cult that, classic. No, no, that is no, no that it's is not a fiction. classic. That is not fiction. <laughs> it is a cult classic. However, here's the interesting thing. This is uh, why this movie is not more well known, and that is uh, you can't find it anywhere. It's not on any streaming service. Correct. In fact, in order for me to own a copy, I had to get a region free uh, region free Blu-ray player and buy a copy of a Blu-ray from from, from uh, Germany. Actually, England. Nope. Cool. There's German. I don't know what to tell you. There's German all over the. I don't know what to tell you. I bought it from England. I don't know what to tell you. There's German all over the DVD, all over the Blu-ray. So doesn't matter. So somebody, England. somebody's wrong. In this so here's the question: How are our viewers going to watch this particular? Movie? That's a good question. They're not. Don't well, like all the other movies. No, it's actually it's actually watch. a real well, movie. It is very strange. Nobody can watch. No, that's not true. That so, is so true. I'm just saying, I wanted to put that out there for people. Can, you can hunt it down. I, I did. You can, you can rent it. it. You so, can rent it. It can be found, but it's just not as easily found as other movies. But it's worth finding. Let me tell you. The cast is... Mwah. So we got Peter Weller, plays Buck Bonsai. A.K.A. Robocop. Yeah, I love Peter oh, Weller. Oh, I like Robocop. I love fucking Peter Weller. Uh, John Lithgow is in it. Ellen Barkin. Jeff Goldblum. Christopher Lloyd. Rosalind Cash. Clancy Brown, Lewis Smith. I mean, there's there's many more names I can name. Stellar cast. I mean, just just big names. All there's over only there. two of those names that I ever heard. Well, that's because you don't know shit about movies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so like the movie is like you can't even really. The movie is very wacky. There's a lot of crazy stuff that happens, but but all the characters in the movie play it straight. They're not they're not acting like they're in a silly movie. They're acting like they're in the most dead serious movie ever, which really helps. Because the movie is crazy. It's the main character, just to give you an idea what kind of movie it is, the main character, Buck Rubansai, he is uh, an adventurer, a brain surgeon, an inventor, a crime fighter, a samurai, and a rock musician. In fact, he has a, a group of other scientists that he has helping him do stuff, and they're all together in a band called the Hong Kong Cavaliers. <laughs> I mean, it's like the most absurd, ridiculous shit ever. Definitely. You know? Oh, no, it yeah. was. The first time I watched it, I was like, what the hell am I watching? So what it, is, what it is, is um, <laughs> there's some aliens from the eighth dimension who are trying, who are evil, who are trying to uh, take over the world, basically. They're trying to destroy the world. And so Buck Rubanzai and his group of hard-rocking scientists have to band together and stop. Them. That's what it's about. I mean, the movie's got a little bit of everything. It's got... Sci-fi, romance, comedy, detective story. I mean, it's a whole bunch of things. Jeff Goldblum in a pair of chaps. Jeff Goldblum in a pair of chaps. That is correct, yeah. The movie, yes, yes, he is in a pair of chaps. Yeah, so, you still movie, haven't said the most important things to movies. Yeah, there are no titties in movies. Oh, there are no titties, titties in this movie. movie. I'm sorry to say. I'm sorry to say. Movie. Yeah, that would have so put it. So it has everything, that but. That, that would have put but it the important the things. Does it have blood and guts? Violence. It does have some violence. It does have some violence. It's not really bloody, no. No. Really bloody. Though people do, people do get killed in it and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, he gave his review and the dog snored. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I thought he so, farted. <laughs> they actually, uh, they actually had planned to make five Buckaroo Banzai movies because uh, when the oh, when the my movie Lord. When, the, well, <laughs> when the movie ends, when the movie ends, it says Buckaroo Banzai will return like in uh, like Buckaroo Banzai versus the World Crime League. That's what it says. So everybody's like, where the hell, is, where the hell is that movie? Because they never made it. When everybody wanted to make it, except for this guy named uh, David Begelman, who was running the uh, movie studio, or I don't know if he was running it at, as the top, or he was one of the higher ups in the, in the movie studio that, that produced the movie. But uh, he didn't like the movie, so he prevented them from being able to do it. They tried to make the other movie, and he, he put the kibosh on it. But that's because Dan Begum, David Begelman is a piece of shit. He there was some. Uh, there was, well, I mean, he was. He knows him personally, but. So there was a lot of uh, embezzling and, and shit like that. The guy was just a corrupt fuck. Well, maybe it's and, because uh, the first movie he, made so much money well, you just couldn't count it all. Movie there's actually did, a convention. Did, no, there's actually <laughs> conventions <laughs> about Buckaroo yeah, Banzai. That was the sarcasm. Yes, but just because oh. a, a movie did not make a lot of money doesn't mean they're not going to make a sequel to it. There's a lot <laughs> of movies Facts. that flopped that had sequels made. He was just a bastard who wanted to prevent the rest of the world from enjoying more Buckaroo Banzai. <laughs> oh, oh, Chris. Shit, I'm getting all worked up. I'm not getting shit up. But, uh, yeah, 
So that bastard, I love that movie so much, and I didn't get to see another one because of him. So fuck you, David Beckerman. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So, from Michael wow. to shut up. Get fucked. No, well, no, and he's oh, dead wow. now, so he can't get fucked. But, uh, I'm probably <laughs> happy that he didn't make the other movies. So you know that his opinion is not that of the entire cast. Well, David Beckerman's dead now, so at least I can... Oh, well, we're you know, okay then. Yeah. Yes. I think he's you can dead. say what you want about yeah, it. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Oh, oh you're not even sure? I, I'm, I'm 100% sure he's dead. Okay. Mostly. Oh, my God. Mostly. <laughs> he said I'm mostly sure. So, All right. All right, so uh, that, yeah. was, uh, that was the uh, recommendation. Uh, we're done. I like it. I guess that's it for next week. So, uh, can I tell you guys? For next week? Yeah. 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 Till next week. Excuse me. Till next week. <laughs> Tanner, Till say me. goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Later. Big dog, big dog. Bye.